Ukrainian immigration to Canada began in 1891. These early Ukrainian immigrants came to Canada seeking the freedom they did not have in their homeland and with the hopes of building a better future for their children. They cultivated the land, braving the harsh winters of the Canadian prairies, often in isolation and deprived of basic necessities. In addition to these challenges, they faced discrimination, but they persevered and began to build the institutions of our Ukrainian-Canadian community while contributing to the development of Canada, making it the nation that it is today. But during the First World War, many Ukrainians and other European immigrants who had helped shape our nation were labeled as enemy aliens. Invoking the War Measures Act, the government of Canada forced over 80,000 individuals to report to the police on a regular basis, who tracked their whereabouts and daily activities. Many lost their jobs, many were treated as pariahs by their neighbors. But those were the lucky ones. Between 1914 and 1920, the Canadian government created a Canada-wide system of internment, or concentration camps as they were referred to where 8,579 people were interned and forced to perform hard labor in remote and desolate parts of Canada. Most of the internees were recent immigrants from the Austro-Hungarian, German, and Ottoman empires, with the overwhelming majority coming from the western Ukrainian regions of Galicia and Bukovina. The affected communities included Ukrainians, Alevi Kurds, Armenians, Austrians, Bulgarians, Croatians, Czechs, Germans, Hungarians, Italians, Jews, various people from the Ottoman Empire, Poles, Romanians, Russians, Serbians, Slovaks, Slovenes, among others of which most were Ukrainian and most were civilians. The camp internees were forced to work on building Canada's infrastructure projects, roads, railroads, and national parks, as well as on resource extraction. There were over 24 receiving stations and internment camps across the country. Located from British Columbia to Nova Scotia, in places such as Banff National Park, logging camps in Northern Ontario and Quebec, the steel mills in Nova Scotia, and the mines in British Columbia, Ontario, and Nova Scotia. 125 people died while incarcerated and were buried in 33 cemeteries across Canada. Although the First World War ended in 1918, the internment camps continued to operate for another 18 months until 1920. Prior to being sent to the camps, the property of the internees was confiscated and most of it was never returned. The emotional and psychological consequences of internment were devastating to the internees and to their families and had a lasting impact on the Ukrainian-Canadian community and other Canadian ethnocultural communities. This dark history of repression was covered up and the documentary evidence was destroyed by the Office of Internment Operations. Some photos survived, as did personal accounts that helped bring this shameful chapter of Canada's history to light. Ukrainian Canadians bore this national shame for decades. Finally, in the 1990s, a redress campaign was initiated by the Civil Liberties Commission of the UCC, and upon its disbandment, continued by the Ukrainian Canadian Civil Liberties Association. The campaign was greatly assisted by Inky Mark, MP whose bill C331, the Internment of Persons of Ukrainian Origin Recognition Act, was passed in 2005. The Ukrainian Canadian Civil Liberties Association joined with the Ukrainian Canadian Congress and the Canadian Foundation of Taras Shevchenko to establish the Canadian First World War Internment Recognition Fund in 2008. This $10 million fund was established to commemorate and recognize the experiences of the ethnocultural communities affected by Canada's first national internment operations of 1914 to 1920.
The Endowment Council now works to support projects and initiatives that inform the public about Canada's First World War internment operations, that commemorate the victims of the internment, and to ensure that this painful legacy is never forgotten. On June 20th, 2020, UCC's National Internment Centenary Committee marked the 100th anniversary of the end of Canada's first national internment operations. We honor the memory of the innocent people who suffered at the hands of the government charged with protecting them. We remember that a century ago, these people were discriminated against, not because of anything that they had done, but only because of who they were and where they had come from. We learn about the past and work for a future free of discrimination and injustice. <laughs>